Plaintiff Jenny Nelson says her mom borrowed her new car and then totaled it while she was rushing her boyfriend home after he got sick from eating a batch of cookies. Defendant Belinda Armour says the accident wasn't her fault and her daughter should be grateful she's still alive. She's also countersuing her daughter for $2,500 for a broken couch and a busted snowblower. Case number 192 on the docket, Nelson versus Armour. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, Judge. Let's see what we have here. We have the plaintiff, Ms. Nelson, and you are suing your mother, uh, Belinda Armour. Yes. For $5,000 for totaling her car. Now, you, the defendant, you are countersuing your daughter for $2,500 for a snowblower and ruined furniture. Correct. Okay, let me start with you. Tell me your side of the story here. Your Honor, my mom is a compulsive liar who totaled my car, I feel like, on purpose. So let me start from the beginning about yes. my car. Yes. So f early February, I get a phone call from my mother, Your Honor, at like 5 in the morning asking me, could she take a male friend home who is a diabetic, who ate too many cookies the night before and got sick. So my thing to her, I said, call 911. I don't need all that attention at my house, and I'm not trying to have him die in my house. I'm trying to get him out of my house. Yeah. I don't need no dead bodies in my house. It's a good philosophy to have. You never want a dead body in your house. Right. <laughs> Me being the loving daughter that I am, I said, you know what, Mom? Here, take my keys, take him home. Please be careful in my car. I go back and to... And this is 5 o'clock in the morning. This is around 5 I'm in the gonna morning. I'm going to give you a chance to answer. Then, at uh, like an uh, hour or so later, a uh, police officer calls my phone. Miss Nelson, your mother was in a terrible accident. Instantly, I start crying because, of course, a natural instinct is my mother okay. I don't, yeah. you're not telling me anything about my mom. Then here's the police knocking on my door. Oh, I just want to let you know that your mother is next door. She's fine. She's just shaking up and steady saying you're going to kill her about your car. So after that, I go next door and she goes to say, oh, a delivery truck ran me off the road and I flipped over. My thing is open and shut. Okay, they ran you off the road. Let's call them up. Yes. Here's my police report. Okay. This and is my car, Your Honor. This is what it looked like after I let her use it. Wow, the wheels are on top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how that went. And look at, but look okay, at my right, car. Okay, all right, let me read the book. Look me... at my car before that, though. Look how happy I was. I waited years yes. for this car. I finally could afford the car. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, I did that. You know, my aunt helped me, yeah. but I did that. I was able to finally do that, and I was proud of my car. Now, give me your side of this, uh, just of the accident part. Um, the delivery truck drew, ran me off the road. I'm lucky to be alive. No, it, it, this happened a week before my birthday. Like I told her, you should be grateful that she was having a birthday party for me instead of planning a funeral for me. That's why I said I checked her before I checked about my car. I got that. But and here's that... the email from the delivery company. And from her witness... This is a statement now. From her witness that she provided. That's the lady who called the ambulance when I was rolled upside down. Okay, okay, but, she was, a, okay, but she was a witness there. All right, let me read it. I also spoke with a witness listed on the police report, and she advised that she did not see a truck pass you, only saw you veer off the road and your vehicle overturned. There was a different statement, dates, and times given to FedEx and Broadspire. That makes it very hard to investigate the loss. At this time, there is no proof that there was a FedEx Express driver involved in this loss. If you have any additional information that will aid in the investigation, please send it to me. So a witness who saw this said there was no truck that drove you off the road. This is just what the witness is saying. I understand uh -huh. what you're saying. Continue. Yeah, they act like I'm upside down in the car. How am I supposed to get a license plate number? What am I supposed to do? Say, okay, officers, cut me out this car so I can find out exactly where I am. I was more scared. When they came and cut me out the car, I was more scared of uh, her killing me than the car killing me. <laughs> Two things. One, with your male friend with the diabetes, next time that happens... Call him an Uber. <laughs> I don't even talk to him. I okay, know my the cookies next time, is good, but he should not have been eating that many. But if it's a life and death situation, call 911, get him to the hospital. It could have been even worse, okay? But anyway, that's not what this suit is about. The suit is about, now you're saying it was this van that caused you to go off the road. I'm telling you that if you think it was the van that 
pushed you off the road, and I'm not saying you're wrong, then you should go after them. Then you have a lawsuit against them. But she has every right to say, you know, when you call me at 5 in the morning and I let you use the car, I expect that the car is going to come back in good condition. Your daughter is now without a car, with enormous expenses, and she didn't do anything wrong. And so it's not outrageous for her to say, Mom, help me out with this. After this, the, the day of the accident, she got on Facebook. She, you know, she posted that picture of the car flipped over, and she wrote a little passage under the um, accident, you know, stating that she signed her truck over to me. That was false. That was false. She never signed her truck over to me because she had a car of her own, like she said. What do you mean she signed a truck over? She's telling everybody on Facebook, oh, yeah, I signed my truck over to her because it's only right because I totaled her car. That was a lie. She never signed anything over to me. She doesn't own the truck now? The bank owns the truck, so I couldn't sign it over to her. Oh, okay. Well, but so I let her use it. You totaled my car. You hear what I'm saying? So now, when I have to go to work, there's no, oh, I got to go to work, too. So now, call your friend or call you a cab or call you an Uber so you can figure out how you're going to get to work. But I'm going to take my truck after I totaled your car, and I'm going to make sure I get to work on time. And then my thing is, she got money from somewhere. God, I don't know where. You know, I'm, I'm not going to next person hustle. She tried to offer me $1,500 for an $18,000 car. And uh, also, what I'd like to see is what the damage estimate to the vehicle is. I, there's no estimated damage because when I tried to send a mechanic to go look at the car, the mechanic looked and said, there's no reason why you're even trying to fix this car. Every airbag is deployed. You have no side mirrors on your car. You have a dent in your driver door where you can't open your driver door. Your Honor, she said that they had to cut her seatbelt off and pry her out of the car. They cut the door open to get me out. I was hanging okay. upside down in a seatbelt. I'm a single mother of four kids. I already don't have transportation to and from a job. You know, I have to depend on but friends. But she act like I did this on purpose. It's not a question of whether or not you did it on purpose. Your daughter is entitled to be compensated for a car that you were driving that got in an accident, and she's without the car, and she's stuck with all those expenses because who she owes the money to is not saying, well, we're going to forgive you because you let your mother drive it. No. So on that, I'm finding for the plaintiff in the sum of $5,000. Okay, well, what about Now, my let's hear about your countersuit. Judge Jerry. I stay by myself, happily. Her kids live on the other side of me. It's like they live with me. She's coming down my back about a car, but your daughter tore up my whole couch. How do you break a couch this severe? And then, not, not even to mention the couch, the snowblower. I let her use my, I'm, I'm out there snowblowing my snow because I'm too old to be out there trying to shovel some snow. Oh, yeah. So I get through snow blowing my snow. I'm not going to do her side. I let her use the snow blower to shovel her side. A few minutes later, she come back talking about some mind. The snow blower don't work. Well, it was just working fast when it cleaned my side. Too old to what? To shovel snow? But you ain't too old to be on Facebook making friends. Your Honor, tell her. My friends on Facebook is not her friends on Facebook. It's Your Honor, not can my you, fault can that you my please friends, tell her? It's not my fault. Can you my please tell send her, me Your Honor, requests. that when I go to the club to twerk, she's not to be in that twerking with me. This is not her. no dance twerk battle between me and my mother. If she's so old to shovel her snow, she shouldn't be popping one leg up and twerking she's, with the other what did leg. What you mean? Period. That's what I don't understand. Uh, uh, first of all, okay. I ain't never been this age, so I don't know how it's supposed to be acted out. You've never been that age? No. So how am I supposed to know how I'm supposed to act when I get that age if I ain't never been this age before? <laughs> Your Honor. See, that, that would be a defense that could always be used, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Your Honor, they say you as young as you are. How old are you? I'm 49. <laughs> They look good, don't y'all think so? Yeah. Do she so, look good enough to shovel snow? Right. Okay, time out. <laughs> but, here's, but here's what the deal is. Part of the reason you have a couch is so grandkids can play on no. it. No. I well, have well, a couch for Jerry, tell her because he is the no, judge. No, no, speak no. it. There's never speak been. The judge is speaking. There's never judge, been. Can I please say this, though? I didn't never once call her up and say, hey, Jenny, have some grandbabies for me because I want to be a grandmama. Too My bad. grandkids don't hey. even call me grandma. They call they me grandma. They like what they like. Because and she learned to be fast okay. not make me a grandma. Right. So, anyway, on that suit, I can't, I can't rule in your favor.
because the grant, that's between you two to settle out of court how much time the kids are going to be over at your place. If that is something you can't handle, then that's something you've got to deal with your mom about. So therefore, in that case... What about the snowblower? She yeah. broke the snowblower. She's a grown woman. She's the snowblower came off the side of the curb and it already had electrical oh, tape on it when she got it. Oh, real, Jenny? And then when I... Hold on. For real? Case dismissed. Thank you. I apologize about your car. I mean, I really wish I wouldn't have never borrowed it. Because I know how bad you been struggling with that. Hey, YouTube, check out my new show, Judge Jerry. Now, for sneak preview and behind-the-scenes footage, subscribe to my channel now.